Hello, my friends. Welcome to another video. So for those of you that celebrate, I hope you enjoyed your holiday. I had a great time. I got some wonderful gifts that I need to thank those who sent them to me. Uh, and I also received a bottle of Ovatrol in the mail. And I don't know who sent it. So if it was you, would you please comment below so I can properly thank you? But anyway, I want to thank Amy for all of the lovely gifts she has sent to me. Amy, you are a doll and I truly appreciate it. I would like to thank Sherry. I would like to thank Dawn and Diane and Rebecca for the beautiful card. Thank you all so very much. And for those that sent in a donation through PayPal, your name is going across the screen right now because there was quite a few of you. Thank you so, so very much. I am humbled and extremely grateful. So, on to the show today. What I want to do today is show you a new recipe I've been playing around with and the results are amazing. So, as you see here, we have essentially three different types of Floetrol. You know, these recipes drive us crazy. One person's getting this great result with American Floetrol, then the next is using this. Then they have this, which is essentially what I've been told. I don't know if this is true, but I've been told this is the UK version of a Floetrol. Now, I don't know if that's who manufactures it or, or where it was founded, but I do know that the people in the UK have easy access to this and not to this, like us Americans. And us Americans have easy access to this, but not this, right? Well, now we do because of a few vendors in the United States, but you get my point. So what I was doing was, I said, you know something? I've never tried this. I don't know if anybody has, but let's take all of the flow trials, combine them all together, make one pouring medium and see how it behaves. And as I said, I was very pleased with the outcome. So I'm going to show you today how I did that. Now, of course, you can do acrylic pouring with just paint and water. You don't have to do this. This is just an experiment for me. Well, it was an experiment for me. And I thought I'd pass the information along to all of you acrylic pouring supply hoarders like me who have all of it. <laughs> so let me get set up and we will get started. Don't mind the pineapple can. I just need something to balance my strainer while I strain the American flow trowel. Now, here's something that's interesting out of the three flow trowels I'm going to be using today. Um, American, for some reason, gets clumps in it and the others two don't. So, I don't know what it is. Well, you know, the Owa trowel may get clumps in it. I've never had that happen yet but I haven't used it long enough to tell you that it does or does not. So to be safe, if you're using the Oatrol, I would strain it. it. Takes two seconds to do. So for each product, I'm gonna measure out eight ounces. Now, obviously you don't have to add this much of each into whatever container you're using. I want a big batch of pouring medium. I'll put it away. Um, I always save my bottles and reuse them for things like this. So I'll put it away and use it as I need to use it. So I've got this strain. Look at that huge clump. Now that would have ended up in my painting had I not done that. So it's very important, especially with the American one that you do. Now the Australian version is so thin, it doesn't clump. I've used it long enough. I've never seen a clump. If there's clumps in it, there's something wrong. Okay, so I have that strained. I'm going to just put it into my big jug here. And that was eight ounces. Again, as long as you use equal parts of each product, it'll be fine. It doesn't have to be eight ounces. It could be 
four ounces, four ounces, four ounces, you know, if you don't want to make that much, which it goes pretty quick. So I just make it. So next up is the Australian Floetrol. As I said, no need to strain this one. Just give it a good shake. All right, so I'm going to put eight ounces of that in there. Add it to the container. All right, so there's that. And then the last one is going to be the Oatrol. And I really want to know who sent this to me. You are an angel, whoever did. Fortunately, it didn't come with a receipt or a note or anything like that. All right, so we'll get eight ounces of that. Which, by the way, eight ounces is one cup for those that don't use ounces. Put it in there, and that is going to be our pouring medium. I'm going to give it a good shake. And we will be on our way. All done. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll mix one color with you, one base color, because I think I might use two base colors today. And just to show you how I use this stuff, it's no different than any other pouring medium. I have some hot pink paint in there, okay? I'm going to fill the cup up halfway with this mixture. A little over half. We'll look at that. As I explained a few videos ago, exact measurements are not necessary. It's going to work. And I also find that combining these three ingredients to create a pouring medium brings it to the perfect consistency. No water really needed if you're using a fluid paint or a medium body paint. If you're using a heavy paint, like a, a thicker level three paint, you're going to need some water. But with this, it's perfect for most acrylic pours already. All right, it flows off the stick beautifully, leaves a little mound. That's what you're looking for, okay? Now, if you want to do Dutch pour or blow paints around, you're going to want it a little tiny bit thinner. But I will say this. If I were to leave it like this consistency and put my blow dryer on high, I would still be able to move the paint. It's going to struggle a little bit, but you can get it done, okay? It's just you want things to be as easy as possible. So add a little bit of the water to it a little at a time. What you're looking for is the paint to roll off of the stick or run down the stick to the surface of the paint in the cup. And you really don't want a mound. If there's a mound forming on the surface, see I'm holding it about, I don't know, two to three inches from the surface of the paint. If there's a, a thick mound still forming, that's too thick. You know what, let me put my flash on so you can see exactly how thick this is. This is a hard color. I'll have to probably show you on the white. White will be easier to see. So you want a little tiny, tiny mound. So you're just going to keep adding water until it gets to that point. If you're trying to blow the paint around. If you're not, you're just doing a flip cup or you're, you know, doing a swipe or something like that, like a typical acrylic pour, then 
the original consistency was fine, okay? So this is much better now, but let me show you on the white so you know what I'm talking about. Let me show you on this color here. I'm actually not going to be using that hot pink. I've changed my mind. This color is called Raindrop. It's from Joe Sonia. My rule of thumb is this. Whatever size container of paint that I want to make, I fill it up about 25 cents. 25 not cents full of paint all right so that has always been my rule of thumb i feel like if i'm making this big huge cup of paint i'm gonna need that much of this color to color all of that pouring medium i'm gonna put in here okay so i use about 25 percent now this color is gonna last me forever because i don't need that much of it or maybe I will. Maybe I'll use it as a base paint. But anyway, fill the cup up 25% of the way with that. And then fill the cup with pouring medium until it's about 75% full. That's always been my rule. That's what works for me. I don't measure or weigh or do anything like that. Give it a mix. This is a very beautiful light sage, almost bluish sage color. It's absolutely beautiful. Let me show you what this looks like. See how it's making a nice little mound on the surface? Hold the stick about three inches away. It's making a nice little fluffy mound when it hits the surface. That right there is the perfect consistency for all acrylic pouring, except for the pearl technique, the Dutch pour, and the bloom technique. So any other techniques, that's perfect. Swiping, all of that works good. If you want the Dutch pour, the pearl cell, you're going to go thinner. You're going to go one step down in the consistency for the Dutch pour, and you're going to go down two steps for the pearl cell. Now, I have a video that has a free printable consistency chart in the description. If you're struggling with consistency, I'll put that in the description for you. You could click on the link, watch the video, print out the chart, and test your consistencies to see if they work, if they're at the right gauge. The consistency video tells you how to use it, what to look for, all of that, okay? So I added a little water, still a little bit too thick, so I'll add a little bit more. I'm looking for there to be a tiny little pinhead of a mound when the paint hits the surface, and I will show you that. Anytime you blow paint around, you want it to move as easily as possible. So, this is much better. Let me show you. So, this is good for paint blowing, whether you're doing a Dutch pour or just blowing some paint. See how the mound is really tiny now? And let me go ahead and put my flash on. See how tiny that mound is compared to the other one? That's what you're looking for. Just like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up all of my colors. I'm going to come back and then we're going to... Blow this stuff around and I'll show you how beautiful this recipe works. I have a 16 by 20 gallery canvas and I have my colors all mixed. Now the colors I'm going to be using for the base are going to be that raindrop and the white. Then I'm going to come in with some Pebeo iridescent blue green, phthalo turquoise green, cobalt blue, Pearlized Dark Blue. This is Master Touch brand from Hobby Lobby. Some Pearlized White. Hobby Lobby Master's Touch. 
24 karat gold deco art Prussian blue. Now the Pevio colors, the full line, in case you didn't know, you can get these in the U.S. with a discount now. That information is in the description. So what I like to do for my base coat is I don't use a scraper or a spatula, anything like that. I typically pour the paint on and use the blow dryer to move it around. For me, it's much easier that way. Uh, for beginners, I feel it would be easier that way too because sometimes using that spatula, you can leave too much in the center. And what happens when you do that is the paint moves a lot more than it should and it ruins your design. So by using the blow dryer and just blowing it around, making sure that the whole thing's covered, it guarantees that there's not going to be a lot of paint left on there if you do it the right way. And I'm going to show you that now. So again, I want to do a split base here. So I think that what I'm going to do is kind of just come down this way, fill in this area. First, move this around and then I'm going to come back with the white. Now, when it comes to the paint colors, I'm going to do one section at a time for my Dutch pour. This is a great way for beginners to kind of ensure they come out, they end up with a proper composition that looks right. Sometimes when you put all the color down at once, it can, can, it can get kind of confusing on which way you have to blow. So if you do one section at a time, you have kind of time to look at it and say, okay, I want my next line to go this way, so this is where I'm going to add the paints. You'll see. Let me blow this out. Now see how I've moved this around and you can see this big pool of paint here? This is what's good about the blow dryer. It, it's more pronounced when that's happening. So when it looks kind of ripply like that, you know you're at the right level. And paint will self-level at this point. So you don't have to worry about that. It's going to level out nicely. I'll do the sides in a minute. First, I want to put my white down before I do that. Here we go. Just going to pour some up there. So I'm just doing the same thing to the top as I did to the bottom. Just take the blow dryer, blow the paint around, and then make the two colors match up in the center somewhere. I'll let this kind of even out a little bit, and then I will go ahead and tilt it to one side to kind of finish the, the leveling process. So just like this. So I sped this part up a little bit, but you can see I'm shaking the canvas slightly with my hand to get it to move down a little bit quicker for me. All right, so we're gonna go like this. You go like that first. 
That's going to be our first blowout. Next, we will do some of the phthalo. Turquoise. Some of this cobalt. Uh, we want to make sure we sandwich our shimmery colors in the center somewhere here. Oh, let me get that off. These are all shimmery colors here. And then I'm going to put a little more of this Prussian blue on top. Okay, just like that. So now for this first one, I'm just gonna kind of blow straight across the edge there, or the edge of this. We're gonna just go this way. Okay, just like that. Nice and easy. Take your time. Okay, just like that. Nice and simple. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to come back this way. That's gonna be my next step. Wait until you see the cells this produces, the cells in the lacing. So let's just add a little bit more here. And now I'm gonna come down this way. But now for me being right-handed, I either have to do it backwards using my left hand, which I'm totally useless, or I could just move my canvas. So that's what I will do. So just take your time and kind of go slow with it. Look around, look at the design. There is no rush. The, you know, the paint's not going to start drying instantly. You have plenty of time to stop and pause a moment and kind of reflect on what you're doing. So now I'm going to look at my design and I'm going to figure out what I want to add to this. Okay. So I think what I want to do is I want to definitely build off of this center here, right here and kind of come up almost like a curl. All right. So we'll add our color again. So I'm mad at myself. This right here, I started too far back and therefore I grabbed part of the petal in the first blowout that I did that I did not want to. So now it's too wide. However, you can always fix something like that by scraping and removing the area that you don't like and just put in some fresh white paint and fix it. This Dutch pour in this area here was just a little too overweight for me <laughs> in the center right there. And now we have to figure out if we want to go down this way, right? You gotta kind of, you know, sit there and plot this thing. <laughs> and this is the perk of doing it one section at a time and not putting it all down. The effects in this are amazing. I cannot wait to show you. So one last blowout here. And then I want to remind you to stay tuned because the winner of the Secret Santa Christmas tree painting giveaway is coming up next. So after I did this blowout, I was pretty much done with it. I, uh, talk to you a little bit more after this, but I wasn't happy with that center. And like I said, it's just one little area there in the center. I'll try to put an X over it 
that I was not happy with. Other than that, though, the cells and the things that developed were beautiful. All right. You can keep adding on to it if you want. Um, it's all up to you, you know, on the design. Why I am loving this recipe. You're getting areas that look like almost the bloom effect with the lacing. You're getting areas of the regular flow trawl look like this. And then you're getting areas of the Oatrol look, which is very similar to the flow trawl look. But definitely, I love these big um, open areas that it creates because this is not a cell. It's not really lacing. I just like that bubble look that it's creating. That's, that's what I'll say. See over here, like the, it's a bubble look and it's just, I like it. I like it a lot better than just the American flow trial by itself. So anyway, I hope again that you learned something today. Try out this recipe. If you have all three of those products, if not, Hey, try out two of them. If you have two of them, explore. I think the next time, look at that. I got an eye. Somebody's watching me. <laughs> I think next time what I'm going to do is add a little pouring medium, Liquitex pouring medium to this and see what it gives me. But yeah, those, those little round, perfect round bubble spots are what I am loving about adding the three of these together. So can I get a drum roll, please? Do, 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 do. <laughs> the winner of the Secret Santa is Mary West. Mary, congratulations. You have won the beautiful Christmas tree. I will show you that. Here she is. Congratulations, Mary. Just send me an email and I will get this out to you as soon as possible. And I would love to thank Secret Santa again for donating that painting. And I would like to thank all of you for your eternal support here. <laughs> I love you all. Thank you for joining me, and until the next time, happy pouring.